Good morning, everybody. It's Christy Day, and we are continuing on working on the sweater. So, as you can see, the sweater is put together, but it's missing the sleeves. So, we're going to talk about how I got this curve, this nice fit around the arms. It's very simple. And then we're going to be moving on to um, how to make sleeves and um, most importantly, the shoulders. So before we get into this, let me show you this. Now, when I put this sides together on the mannequin, it looked fine on the mannequin, but then I put it on my body and it was a little bit too gappy right here. So I was like, ah. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna have to felt it right here because it's all wool, alpaca, and silk? But I said, no, 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 no. This is what we're gonna do. We are gonna do a running stitch. So you get your, uh, your needle and thread, just your yarn needle. And on your work, you know, when you, you've taken it off of your of your needle when it's flat and you and you put it up there and you've tacked it on with all of your little things and then you're like well, then you maybe try it on and you're like eh, it's just too gappy so what you do is you do a running stitch now this I found out works exceedingly well if you're looking to get a curved seam. So I've got a curve under the arm. I've got a curve right here. Anywhere you're connecting a curve, I want you to do this running stitch and it'll save, it'll make a nice customized fit. So you get your needle and thread. If you're not a sewer, you're like, what on earth are you talking about, Christy Day? Well, this is all I'm talking about. Over, under, over, under, over, under, it's just a basic, it's called a running stitch, it's just a weave sort of thing. So see, you've got it over, under, over, under, and then you just pull on through, and then you can cinch it. But when you, what you do is you can kind of customize where you want it to go on here, and then you can bring it up to any point on your other curve and connect it and it will naturally curve for you. Isn't that awesome? Now I did not do that in one of my other pieces and you can see the problem. This is one of the first sweaters I did. It's 100% alpaca. And it's, my neighbor calls it my wooby. This is like a big blanket. <laughs> she goes, I saw you. Or he's transgender. She goes, I saw you wearing your uh, wooby the other day. I'm like, yeah, no. It's so warm, so comfortable. But I'm so out of the screen. So, um, it's like a little inside out. So, see, I did not, well, it's inside out. Oh, well, you get the thing. I did not do that right here. I can't stand that. It's not, it's inside out. Let me put it back around this way. I don't want you guys to think I have all these weird seams. Okay. All right. So this was the first one, which is cool, except look at all this extra. Ah, it's like too big, but I mean, I go with it because I love it and it's comfy and it's crazy warm and it's a ton of fun. But if I had it to do over again, these sleeves would be more cinched, all right? Because this area, I just crocheted extra and I want to prevent that from happening in the next one. So, my hair's a mess. So, what you do, I said to myself, I want, oh, see, I ran out of the stuff. It's different alpaca. Anyways, one day I'll fix that, but not today. So, what I'm going to do with this one 
They're gonna be three fourths, they're quarter length sleeves. So I measured, I measured right here and I said, okay, every two stitches is one inch. So I needed, you know, so many go across here and then I increased up here. Now, I'm assuming you guys know how to knit and add an increase. And if you don't, message me and I will do a very basic knitters um, video so that you can jump into this. But you see right here underneath, this is gonna be super easy to connect. I'll just need to put like maybe one or two rows for right here. But up here, oh, look at this giant gap. I need a whole lot up here. So what I'm going to do, I don't think I'm going to crochet this, even though I'd be way better at crocheting the shape, way better. Um, I think I'm going to try to um, knit a separate piece and it's going to go one line and then it's going to go, it's going to be like this bell shape is what it's going to be. It needs to be a bell shape that I can connect to the top of here. I'm going to try that. And if that doesn't work, then I'm just going to crochet that shape because I know for a fact I can crochet a shape. What I do is I draw out the shape, the bell shape, and then I just put my work on top of it and check as I go. And then I will attach it to here and I'll see how it works. And that'll be that. And that's how I do it. It's not rocket science. Um, so that's how we're going so far. So you start with your flat piece, you measure along, you increase as you're getting higher, but you can't even tell because you have to scrunch it all on here because, uh, oh no, I got a couple miss stitches and I'm gonna have to pull up here to see what happens if you mess with your work too much. All these loops that have to get put back on here and not dropped. No, no, I hate that. If you knit, you hate that too. Okay, so I have to scrunch it on here so I can't really fully pull it out because this needle is smaller than the full length that I need to go around the whole arm. And so it makes it a little challenging. The other challenging thing is I'm running out of yarn. I have some more yarn soaking in the bathtub. So um, I just have to keep producing more of the same yarn so that I can finish my project, which is why it's not super fast and why I'm not sitting down and knitting this with you guys and not making a nice whole series of us just knitting together because I knit and then I spin and then I'm set the twist and then I ball it up and then I knit a little bit more and you know it's a process so you know it, it'll take weeks to get this done so I'm just showing you the little bits and pieces as we go so this is the next step is I've got these you know basically the length of this done and I'm going to take it off of here and I've already showed you guys binding off um so I'll just take it off with a needle, turn it flat, and then I'll sew it down the seam. You can't even see the seam, can you? Because <laughs> it's all the same yarn. So it works out perfect like that. So then I'll do that. And I just, I need to make the shoulder bigger. I need to make a curved part that gets tapered near the bottom. If you ever take apart a garment, you'll see that. Or if you look at a book, on making garments, they'll show you that. It's like a shape, like it's like a bell on top of a, a sleeve that gets turned around. Questions, comment below. I'm happy to answer and supplement with anything that you might want to know. It's all about the creation. You can do it. You know you can. It is not rocket science. People have been doing it for thousands of years. If you don't like it, just rip it up and, you know, pull out your things and start again. It's about learning as you go. 
you've got this, you can do it. And even if it's not perfect, and somebody says, I don't know if I like that, you'll say, you know what? I don't care if you don't like this. When you can make yarn from nothing but fluff, and when you can make it into a cloth, then you can criticize. And even then I might not even care because I'm so pleased with myself for being able to actually create any form of cloth that can be put on my body. Ha! So there, take that, <laughs> right? It's true. You're amazing just because you're even trying to do this. Do you know how many people never even attempt to do this? You rock for simply being curious enough to learn how to do it. Okay, that's Christy Day, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.